A very good morning to you all and welcome back to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom. And we start from where we had left the last time. In the last lecture, we had discussed about the data formats, the wide format of data and the long format of data. And in this lecture, I'll tell you why uh, you need to alter the data formats. And then, of course, we move from the box plot to the next type of plot, that is the violent plot. The lectures that you should already have gone through include number one, R underscore 13, built-in data sets in R, because we're going to use uh, the uh, iris data set for this example today and i had introduced you to ggplot2 in this lecture here this is r16 ggplot2 making information rich high resolution bar graphs in r here in details i discussed the basic strategy of ggplot2 and the elements in ggplot2 in r and score 70 we first created our box plot so it would again be Nice if you could go through this lecture for a better understanding. And then, of course, uh, the last lecture that you should go through before coming to this lecture is the R underscore 21. This is in level two. And uh, basically, uh, here we have talked about reshaping of data. I will talk very briefly about it today. So in today's lecture, we discuss first the wide and long data formats, which we've already discussed in the previous lecture. And then I show you the box plot. And then for the same data, how do you create a violent plot with an embedded box plot? So let's get started and go to the practical demonstration straight away. So here we are. And if you look up here, I have changed the quadrants a little bit so that it is more comfortable for us to watch how the graphs are made. So my console and environment are on the right hand side. And my source and my plots tab quadrant are on the left hand side. And you can do this by going here and you can arrange panel layout and you can choose to to alter the positions of your panel the way you want them, right? So here you are, we are looking at reshaping the data, the wide and long format. And then of course, we're going to plot a box plot of it and also a violent plot out of it. And then we're finally going to plot a, a violent plot that has an embedded box plot inside it, right? So that is what we're going to do today. If you do not have the required library, you'll have to install the library. So in that case, if you want to go through command line, you have to say install.packages and then in round brackets and in double quotes, the library that you want to install, the library that we want to install here is tidy R because we'll require to convert our data from wide shape to long shape data, right? And it will be in context to tell you that the same can also be done uh, using the reshape to library and the melt command, but that we'll discuss some other time. Today, we follow the tidy R uh, library and alter our data from the wide format to the long format. So once you have installed libraries, the libraries have to be invoked into your uh, programs. So that can be done using the command library and in round brackets, the name of the library. So here we are going to call two libraries, library tidy R and library ggplot2. So let me just run this part so that we have invoked our libraries into our program and we can use the commands that are there in these libraries uh, in our program. Then we move on and we look at the data set. And today we're going to use the iris data set. Uh, this is an inbuilt data set in R, so you can say data iris and your iris data set will be loaded. And then of course uh, you could view the iris data set with the view command. V has to be capital, remember? So you say view and in round brackets, you give your argument. The argument here is iris. So let me run this uh, command here. And here we are, this is your iris data set. So if you see here, this is uh, 150 entries and five total columns. And basically you have the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width of three species of uh, iris, setosa, virginica, and versicolor. So basically you have 50 flowers of setosa, 50 flowers of, uh, of virginica, and 50 flowers of versicolor, and whose Sepal length, petal length, petal width, and sepal width is given to you. 
So three species, four parameters, 50 samples each, which means in total you have 600 different values given up here. So now we come to the question, why do we need to reshape data here? So if you see here, there are four parameters in four different columns, and then there is a species column that is a categorical variable, uh, which has three different species, Petrosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. So this is typically what is known as the white format of data. And the numerical and categorical values to be plotted are spread over several different columns. So now let's say you want to plot all the four values, uh, that is sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width in a single graph. So this is where the problem comes in, because uh, when you define your x-axis or the y-axis, at max, what we can mention as a single column, right? So therefore, uh, what you need to do is to combine these data together into a single column that would be called a measure or something. And then, of course, you have an additional column that works as your key, and that allows the, uh, the graph to be plotted. So let's say we use the wide data format to plot the graph and we're going to plot a box plot. So we say wide underscore graph is equal to ggplot. And then of course, in round brackets, we mentioned the name of the data set, data set is iris. Then we define our aesthetics and aesthetics, we define what is going to be our x axis. So x axis is going to basically represent a species. Now we come to the y axis and y axis now can only hold one column here. So in this case, Let's say we only say sepal dot length. So we are not rep representing other four columns here in terms of uh, petal length or petal width or sepal width. We can only at max represent one column, which is sepal dot length here. And then, of course, we define our labels. So we say labs x equal to species, y equals to length in centimeter. We also define our title, petals and sepals of virus species. But in this case, it would only be sepals of the artist species because other data cannot be represented here. Then you define your aesthetics and the color. So you say fill equal to species. So the graph that you make would be uh, color with respect to the species. And then of course you say geo minus code box plot. So which is basically to say that you're going to make a box plot here. And uh, once you're done with this, you can print your graph here. So let's uh, run this part and see what we get here. So while this is a beautiful representation of the length of sepals in the three species of virus, this is not representing our complete data because we have data also on petal length and petal width and also on sepal width. And therefore, to make sure that we could also incorporate that data, we need to change the shape of our data and make it into three columns. So that is what we do next using the tidy R library. Uh, so now that we know that we need to reshape our data, let's reshape the data using the tidy R library. And if you remember, we have already invoked, installed and invoked the library in the earlier uh, commands. So here you are, here is where you have installed it. And then this is where you are invoking the library into your program so that the commands that are available in TidyR are available to you for data wrangling and data reshaping, right? So uh, the command that we're going to use in TidyR to do this is going to be gather command. So we say iris underscore long, equals to gather. Gather is what is going to merge several different columns together into a single column and also provide a key to the values that are merged. So here you are, you say iris underscore long equals to gather. Then you provide the data set name, which is iris. And then of course, we define the new columns that are going to create. So one column is parameter and the other column is measure. So the parameter will hold the categorical variable and measure will hold the numerical variable for the columns that you're going to merge. And then of course, the columns that are going to merge include sepal dot length pet until petal dot width. So when you use is to, it is basically from starting from column X to column Y, everything in between is to be merged into a single column. So if you see here in our iris database, you start with sepal dot length and you end with petal dot width. So all this sepal dot length, sepal dot width, petal dot length, petal dot width have to be merged into a single column. Uh, that is what you're instructing the program here. And then you also say factor underscore key equals to true, which means uh, this order of values has to be uh, kept intact. So first in your merged columns, you'll have sepal dot length values, then you will have sepal dot width values, then you'll have petal dot length values, and then finally, you'll have the petal dot width value. So you have 150 sepal dot length values, followed by the next 150 sepal dot width values, 
followed by the next 150 petal dot length values, followed by the last 150 petal dot width values, which means you'll have a total of 600 rows now. So here is what you get when you merge your columns together and create two new columns, one that holds the values and the other that holds a categorical variable representing what does the value represent, whether it is petal dot length or petal dot width or sepal dot length or sepal dot width. So you can have a look at the shape of virus underscore long using the view command. So let's have a look at this. So you say run and here you are. So this is your long format of the same data. Let me just pull this down further so that we have a clearer view. So here you are, this is your long format of data. Here you have uh, 600 rows and there are three columns. First you have Setosa, uh, sepal length, 50 values. So one to 50 will be Setosa sepal length. Then if you see from 51 onwards, you have versicular sepal length. The next 50 until 100, you have versicular mm -hmm. sepal length. Then you have from 101, the virginica sepal length. Right? And then you move for, further down and from 151 onwards, you have the setosa sepal dot width, then followed by the next 50. So at 201, you will have versicular sepal dot width. And then of course, at 251, you will have the virginica sepal dot width. And likewise for petal dot length and petal dot width. So it's essentially you have now 600 rows representing the same data. There is no loss of information when you convert from wide format to the long format except that the columns are merged so that these values can be plotted onto a graph, right? So now we move on to plotting our box plot again. And this time we are including all the four uh, parameters, sepal dot length, petal dot length, sepal dot width, and petal dot width, right? So here you are. We will now use the iris underscore long data set for our plotting of the graph. And that will give us a handle to plot all the four uh, parameters in one single graph. Right. So if you see here, you have the species column, you have the parameter. So the parameter consists of four categorical variables, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And then finally, you have the last column that is measured that has the values corresponding to either the sepal length or sepal width or petal length or petal width. So we can now use these columns uh, to plot the entire information that is there in the data set in a single graph. And since I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make a box plot and then from the same data, a violent plot, and then further from the same data, a violent plot with an embedded box plot, we'll first define our base graph. This would include everything except the geom, right? And this can be reused again and again for making different types of plots. So this makes it modular and makes it very easy to explain. So here we are, we say base underscore graph is equal to ggplot. And first, of course, we define the data set we're going to use. So this time we're going to use the long data set format. So this is iris underscore long. Then we define our axis. So we say aesthetics, AES, and in round brackets, x axis equals to species. So x axis will be the species as is shown here as well. And then the y axis would basically be uh, plotting the measure. So measure basically represents the actual merge values that have now created. Then you close your aesthetics, you say plus, and you now define your labels. So X is a species, Y is length in centimeters. The title is now the correct title, variation in petals and sepals of R is a species. You say plus, and now you define your theme. And in theme, what you want exactly is that your name should come in vertical at 90 degrees to the uh, to the x axis. So, therefore, you say axis.text.x. That is to say that the label from the x axis must be coming at 90 degrees to the axis. So, therefore, you say equals to element underscore text. And in round brackets, you give your argument angle equals to 90. Close these arguments. And then, of course, you say plus and your faceting with respect to the parameters. So, faceting means you're grouping the data together with respect to parameter. What are your parameters? Your parameters are sepal dot length, sepal dot width, petal dot length, and petal dot width, right? And then, of course, uh, you are coloring your graph with respect to the species color. So you say AES fill equal to species. So you're defining your aesthetics, the extra aesthetics that you're adding is that your graph color should come with respect to the species they are representing, right? 
So this is your base graph. This will remain the same for all the graphs that we plot now. And, and what we're now going to change is only the type of plot that you're making by specifying the geom. First, let's uh, print out our base graph, right? So here you are, you say, you run this part and you say print base underscore graph. So this should give you the base graph. So here you are, you said X axis is species. So you have the three species mentioned here, Cetrophyla, Versicola, Norginica. Then on the Y axis, you're putting up the measure. So Y axis has, uh, has a spread of zero to eight in centimeters. Uh, then of course uh, you have your labels. So the X axis is labeled as a species here. The Y axis is labeled as length in centimeter. And the title of the graph is variation in petals and sepals of iris species. This is mentioned here, variation in petals and sepals of iris species. And then you had also mentioned that you want a 90 degree tilt at the individual labels in the X axis. So you have the three species and their tilt at 90 degrees here. And uh, then of course you had faceted with respect to parameters. So all sepal length data would come up here. All sepal width data would come up here. Likewise, all petal length data for the three species would come up here. And all the petal width data for the three species would come up here, right? So this is your faceting or how do you define your grids? And then of course uh, you are also defining that the color of the graph should be based on the species. So that is AES will underscore species. So while the graph is not plotted yet, so therefore you don't see that, but when you define your geom along with the base graph, you'll be able to see your plots here, right? So this is your base graph. You have everything here. Uh, set up except for your actual graph, which you define by the geom that you specify. So now let's uh, fill up this graph here. So we move on. So now we add geoms to the base graph. So we say first, of course, we are making a box plot. So we say graph one equals to base graph. So everything that is there in base graph, in addition, you also want to plot the box plot. So you say geom underscore box plot, and then you say print graph one. So when you run this now, you'll get your first box plot. So here is your box plot. And while the box plot is a good summarization of your data in terms of mean, median, interquartile ranges, and so on and so forth, it doesn't show you the complete dispersion of data. So one of the major drawbacks of box plot is that while it gives you a nice summary of your data, it does not show you the actual distribution of data. So one way of making the box plot more representative is to add what is known as geom underscore jitter. This will give you the distribution of points across the box plot. So we say graph dot one equals to base underscore graph. Uh, so everything that is there in the base graph will be included plus geom underscore box plot. And uh, so basically you're making a box plot here and you're also specifying that var width equals to true, which means that the width of the box will be representative of the number of samples in that particular category. And plus we also add the jitter. So we say plus geom underscore jitter uh, with no argument. So geom underscore jitter allows you to see the distribution of values along the box plot. And then of course you print the graph. So here you are, you run this. So here you are, this is now a representation of your box plot with the idea of distribution of values across the box plot. So you could also change the color of the jitter by defining additional aesthetics in the argument. So what you say is graph dot one equals to base underscore graph. So base graph plus geom underscore box plot where it's equals to true. In this case, because all samples are 50 each, so there is no difference in terms of the number of samples. So the width of the boxes will be the same for all the categories. And then you say plus and you say geom underscore jitter and in the arguments, you define the aesthetics. In aesthetics, you're defining the color aesthetics. You say AES, color equals to parameter. So which means based on the parameter, there will be a specific color assigned to each parameter. What are our parameters here? The parameters are sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Why are we giving parameters as a color? Because if you get if you give a species as a color, then your point will be the same color as the graph, and therefore blue on blue would not uh, show up as a point. So therefore, what is important is that you give a color different from what is there in your base graph. So for the base graph, we have given the color as a species. 
So here in this case, we say that the jitter color has to be specific to the parameter. What are our parameters? Sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. And then of course, we print the graph one here. So here you are, you run this part. And there you go. However, as you can see, if the plot is too crowded and may not look very good if you have too many samples. So a better and visually more representative alternative to this is what is known as a violin plot. A violin plot basically represents the distribution of data in terms of density plots. So basically it's a histogram that is smoothed and mirrored in a horizontal fashion. So now we move to the violin plot and here again we keep the base graph. So everything in the base graph remains the same. And then in addition to the base graph, we now have a geom that is violin, right? So we say graph two equals to base underscore graph plus geom underscore violin with no arguments. So, and then of course you are printing the graph here. So when you run this now for the same data, now you have your violin plot. And if you see here, violin plot clearly indicates this is unimodal. There is a single uh, peak here. Then this is also unimodal. This is also unimodal. But come here, this is kind of multimodal. So this is typically what is known as a violin plot. And uh, if you can see the individual shape of the objects is typically like a violin. And uh, then of course, this basically represents the distribution of values across your data. So the base violin plot can be made more informative if you could overlay the box plot on the violin plot. So that is what to do next. We overlay a box plot into the violin plot and that gives us the complete representation of the information that we have in the iris data set. So we say graph three equals to base underscore graph and in base underscore graph, we have defined the basic uh, skeleton of the graph. So you have your titles, your labels, your X axis, your Y axis, etc. And then uh, we say plus geom underscore violin. So you'll have your violin plot and overlaid on it will be the box plot. So geom underscore box plot. And we ensure that the width of the box plot is lesser than the violin plot by giving a lower value. So say width equals to 0 0.1, color equals to yellow. So the outline of the box plot will be in yellow color. And then you say alpha equals to 0 0.5, that is the transparency, right? So let's run this part to get the final graph that is a violin plot with an embedded box plot. And this will be the complete representation, the most exhaustive representation of the data that you have at hand. That is the iris data set. So let's run this now. This is the final plot. And uh, if you see here, this is a violin plot with an embedded box plot. The box plot gives you the data summary in terms of five data points. So mean, median, first quartile, and third quartile, and the outliers, and so on and so forth, interquartile range. And the violin plot gives you the idea of the density of distribution across the box plot. So this is the most comprehensive uh, representation of the data at hand and can be used as a publication quality graph. And it's time now to export the graph and use it later. So here you see you have an export option. You can go to export and click on save as image. This will save as JPEG image or you could save as PDF. You could also copy the plot to clipboard. Right? So we close here and then of course uh, we move on to bioconductor from here and we'll look at how to read a fastq file using the bioconductor library called short reads.